Hello and welcome to Fresh Dialogues. Today I'm delighted to welcome Chris Ann Brennan. She's the first love of Steve Jobs, the mother of his first child, Lisa Brennan Jobs, and the author of the book The Bite in the Apple. Chris Ann, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. You were featured heavily in the CNN documentary. Can you talk about being involved in that and what you're hoping to achieve by contributing so fully in the making of that documentary about Steve's life? When they first approached me, they said that Alex Gibney did not manipulate content and that in the spirit of what I intended, he would, uh, he would uphold that. Um, and I, I've had a lot of experience because of Steve where people, they kind of run on their own agenda. But I found Alex Gibney did uphold what I, I was interviewed for five hours. They told me before I saw it, they told me I was the emotional heart of the movie. That's beautiful. It is beautiful, mm -hmm. all things considered. I would have mm -hmm. wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, what message are you hoping to get over by being so involved in that project? That that movie shows the spectrum. I don't want to judge Steve because he did what he did and it was fabulous. But I like the fact that the spectrum shows we are different people now. Mm -hmm. We value different things. We will expose these things because we, we want to have a dialogue in the world about, about the whole picture, not mm -hmm. just the Mount Rushmore. We want everything. Yes, the fully, and so you can contribute that fully faceted perspective yeah, I do on his feel life, like someone who's, who's idolized to show and at one stage we were emailing we were corresponding and you said i don't want to paint me as the victim and steve as the villain is there an alternate way you you like to frame it in your mind that will continue to, to evolve mm -hmm. um i survived it i have more than survived it i've survived him um and do you feel that's a victory right there i feel it says that if we hold on to the truth, it actually starts to amount to something. Mm -hmm. This was twisted love, and that way, is this, is this a weird thing to say? <laughs> I do, I just think it was twisted, and we would have done better if we could have, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you wish you'd done differently? Oh yeah, like, but I couldn't have, I mean, when I was living with Steve and he was showing me his poetry, I really wish I'd taken it to heart more deeply. Um, was this his Bob Dylan poetry? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's other things like that because when I grew up enough to be an adult and understand that 17 year old, I felt like, oh, yeah, there's just so much. Like, if we had a chance to talk now, it'd be great. Mm. What would you ask him? I think I would just express some kind of love. You would tell me you love him? In some form. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's beautiful. And I want to find that passage we were talking about earlier. The side of Steve that is not well known, this goofiness. And running into the kitchen one day, he took the phone off the hook, pressed the pound key, and told me he had just blown up the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's very powerful. One last question. What do you feel was Steve's greatest legacy. He showed people how to free up, how to free themselves up, how to be who they were. Yes, he made a, a technological device that actually helped them free up, but mainly the message is be who you are. Now, a lot of people, people are kind of running around trying to be like Steve Jobs. They miss the point. It is to individuate enough and understand what you need to go out and do. And um, he was just a fabulous example of it in so many ways. Great. Well, Chris and Brennan, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.